بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على خاتم النبيين صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته dear brothers and sisters dear viewers just a short uh, message uh, for you out there to think to contemplate these are the first five lines of the Lamiat ibn al Wardi and um, he gave that as as a way of wisdom as a way of teaching and as a way of actually memorization. And it starts like this. He said, اعتذر ذكر الأغاني والغزل وقول الفصل وجانب من هزل ودعي الذكر لأيام السبا فلا أيام السبا نجم أفل إن أهنا عيشة قد ديتها ذهبت لذاتها والإثم حل وترك الغادة لا تحفل بها تمسي في عز وترفع وتجل وافتكر في منتهى حسن الذي أنت تهواه تجد أمرا جلا Up to this point, what he said here in the first line, he said اعتذر ذكر الأغاني والغزل He said get away from أغاني والغزل Now get away from it meaning to say the remembrance of it The remembrance of أغاني Now أغاني, you can think that this is songs but the, the, the real meaning of أغاني is beautiful women now there's nothing wrong in Islam with beautiful women and there's nothing wrong with beauty but in the right perspective and in the right place and in a pure environment. So just like when they say the hijab is a problem or sexuality is a problem in Islam, it is not. It is actually the, the attraction between male and female will always be there. But to put it in the right context, in the right time, in the right place so that it could be pure. So there needs to be no tension in a public environment between male and female. So when the wife is attracted to the husband, the husband is attracted to the wife. This is something else within the confines of their house or their own privacy. Now, what he's saying is to get away from or to move away from the remembrance of beautiful women. Because one is more beautiful than the other. And this is exactly what they would have you thinking when the women walk up and down this boardwalk uh, showing uh, the, the dresses of, of these fancy designer labels who actually make uh, turn around and make money off the backs of poor people who are just barely surviving because they have to fit into this culture. So he's saying get away from the memories or get away from the thoughts of these beautiful women because one is more beautiful than the other. And ghazal, ghazal to say these love poetry, I walk for you, I die for you, I cry for you. And these are all literally mostly lies. There's nothing, you know, somebody out there looking who's non-Muslim will be saying, well, you know, how fanatical is this that, you know, they're saying. But how Islam looks at it is anything that actually takes you away from the remembrance of your creator is something to be shunned. Meaning to say you put everything in the right, right perspective. So what uh, Ibn al-Wardi said to get away from the thought of these beautiful women and also get away from ghazal. Meaning to say all these love poetry that actually entrances the human being so that they won't be able to see what the real matter is. They will be only concentrating on, on the frivolousness of, of just uh, artificial beauty and not be able to understand who their creator is. Now... And then it says, وَقُولِ الْفَصْلَ وَجَانِبْ مَنْ حَزَدْ So say the truth and جَانِبْ مَنْ حَزَدْ and, and, and beside yourself, meaning to say get away from somebody who is lazy. So speaking the truth is very very important. قُلِ الْحَقَّ وَإِنْ كَانَ مُرًّا The Messenger of Allah said, say the truth even if it is bitter. But there has to be put into proper context. You don't tell somebody to annihilate their feelings. You don't tell them to make them distraught, you don't tell them to crush their emotions, you tell them in a way that will be able to suffice, uh, be able to uh, give, give in the proper context, meaning to say that you don't hurt their feelings, but at the same time, be able to say it, even if it is bitter. So sometimes one has to say the truth, even if it is bitter. So that's what the Messenger of Allah Wasallam said in the hadith. But what Ibn al-Wardi is saying is, قُلُ الْفَصْلَ وَجَانِبْ مَنْ حَزَدْ Say the truth. Meaning to be, be a truthful person. A truthful tongue is very, very important because if your heart is truth, truthful, then your tongue will also uh, exp, uh, will propound what is in, inside the heart. The tongue that actually differentiates between or is, is different than the heart itself is the tongue of a hypocrite. So your tongue should be what your heart is, heart is saying. And that's why we will see all of these 
major politicians that were coming out and espousing all of these great ideas, their hearts hold something different. And now they're being exposed because of the advent of, of, uh, of um, internet and all these technologies, they slip up. So what he's saying, say the truth and beside yourself from people who are lazy. Because lazy, lazy people will get you what? Will get you to be depressed, will never get you to go anywhere. And Muslims by the very nature are supposed to be uh, goal oriented. Meaning to say that they're goal oriented but they leave everything in the hands of Allah at the same time. Meaning to say that you don't get overly stressed over your life, you don't want to go and commit suicide because I'm so depressed, I want to go. So there are some clinical cases where people are uh, chemically, meaning they have a chemical imbalance, that's, that's something to be treated. But because we're living in such artificial environments, the human being cannot breathe any longer. We don't see sunshine any longer. We're in office spaces where the biggest se uh, sense organ, meaning your skin, is having no fluctuation. It's kept at a one, one, rem one, one degree that, is, that does not fluctuate. Office temperature and one kind of lighting, there's, there's no sunshine to come in, so people usually are going into depression. So lazy people actually make you like that and you become lazy because of the environment also. So say the truth and beside yourself from people who are lazy because lazy people will get you to go nowhere. Laziness is also one of the diseases of the heart because you procrastinate. You cannot do anything today because you leave it to tomorrow. And these are one of the diseases of the heart. So he said, he said, get away from the, from the remembrance of the Ayyam al Siba. Ayyam al Siba, the, the days of youth. So to forget about that. Do not actually delve into things that will, that will eat away at you. Uh, forget about being, oh, my youthful years. Because now when you're 18, 20, you don't think about that. But when you start becoming 35, 38, 42, 45, 50, and as you go on, Climbing the ladder of age itself, what will happen to you is that you will start thinking about meaning to say barely the, the, the days of youth is like Najmun Afal, meaning the shooting star. It will just come like this and it's gone. And as you can see, that your life is just but a number of days. Every breath that you take is a breath closer to your death. This is how it is. And that's how the youth is. It will just go like a shooting star. So if you haven't accomplished anything, this is why Islam puts emphasis on time. Imam Ahmad, he said it's like saying the, the Adhan uh, in, in, the, in the year of the baby itself. And what, what delays between the Adhan is the prayer. So when you are born, somebody says the Adhan, especially if you're a Muslim, meaning the call to prayer in your ear and then Somebody prays on you when you die, if you're lucky, if you're lucky. So somebody will pray for you. He said, this is how it is. And why? Because this is how the shortness of life is between Adhan and Iqama. When you have called the, the call to prayer, you wait and you say, okay, the Iqama, meaning to say when the prayer is starting, you say that and then the prayer starts. Meaning your life is that short between the Adhan and the Iqama. And this is a wonderful analogy for the human being to understand because the youth is like that. So beside yourself from people who are lazy because they will devour your youth and stop thinking about oh my youth, oh my youth, oh my youth and, 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 and totally engrossing yourself in things that are very ungodly, uh, doing things that are unscrupulous, doing things that actually harm human beings. And why? Because you are young, you have power, you have health, and all of those things that Allah has granted you, and then it goes just, just like that. Najmun Afal, meaning to say a shooting star. We have enjoyed this life and it is finished. Meaning to say that you have enjoyed all of the good things. People get depressed because, oh, oh, how do I get my big screen TV? Oh, when do I get my next uh, a new car? Oh, what will I do? My car is uh, older than somebody else's and it's not the newest model. What do I do? I don't have the latest computer, the latest gadgets. I don't have the latest cell phones. I don't have the ringtones that somebody else has. I don't have the plans that they can get because their father's rich. This is all of these things that you have enjoyed. 
in this life inna ahna aishatin qaddaytaha thahabat ladhatuha wal ithmuhal and all of those things have gone away 